Yo, quite some time ago, or what certainly feels quite some time ago, I played a title called Sable, which was, well, is beautiful, right? It, it is, it was, a, it, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It was this little, well, not a little girl, so a, a girl that was maturing uh, in this nomadic tribe um, who was going on an event called gliding which is like something that every young lady goes on um, to like go out into and experience the wide world and it's just it was so magical it really hit like some emotional thing <laughs> in me do you know what I mean and I was just like wow this is beautiful and I just the characters are so beautiful and, and everything and and I've thought about the game quite a lot since I played it, but I've never really like got back round to part two. I'd just done a few trials, if you like, and built the bike up and said goodbye to various members of the community. And just managed to get outside of the little valley type thing that, that we were last in. The community packed up and, and left actually. So now I'm going to be on my journey. But it's a beautiful title, for sure. So really, just, you know, I, I was so lucky to have discovered this. Sometimes I feel like that with games, and I'm just like, how lucky am I to have found this title? Like, what a hidden gem. Do you know what I mean? And this is why. Like, it's, it's finding hidden gems like this. I mean, this was actually on Game Pass at one point, so I don't know how much of a hidden gem it was, really, because a lot of people would have come across this title. A lot of people didn't really get it, I think, as well. But to me, it's a hidden gem. I didn't have Game Pass when it was on there, I don't think. Well, I wasn't aware of it. It wasn't really on my radar. And I'm like, wow, so lucky to have found this. I really am. Well, I haven't actually explored much of the game. I've, I've done the equivalent of the prologue, and that's about it, really. So I've yet to, to actually get like into the game, playing as this nomad. And what is a rite of passage, by the looks of things, called the gliding? And everybody undertakes this rite of passage. Now this happened last time. So the whole title is only two gigabytes big, but it takes a while to load up. So this is my bike, a bit of a speeder. Um, this is the area by which, like, I grew up more recently, and managed to find various things to do. Now, um, what I don't know about is the controls. It's been that long. Oh, I've got an infantry, bike parts and keys. I don't know what a key is. The gliding stone. Oh yeah. Compass, device given by JD, the navigator and the map. I rode a hoverback for the first time and didn't catch on fire. It just gave me the sandcutter to drive. Okay, so these are all the like the missions I'd completed. I should speak to Utari, the machinist at Burnt Oak Station. Okay. Oh yeah, the Ibex camp. So, um, I'm not really sure. Where to go? There we go. There we've got some controls. Uh, 
right, jump, hold to hover, interact, X, compass is LB and map is the view button, navigator is RB. Is that an RB or an LB? Doesn't matter. It's going to be one or the other. Compass navigator crouch is left click. Sprint is B and throw is B. Hmm, that could be confusing. Sit. Y is called bike. Accelerate. A is change bike mode. Photo mode and begin fishing. Okay. Alright, so we can go left and right. That's weird. I don't know why you'd want to stray from this thing. Um, I should collect more mass as part of my gliding. So, so yeah, okay. Let's get started on this journey. I don't know if I. over here I'm not sure what this place is I tell you what as well this title is a little bit like, let's just see where it's installed. It's on the internal storage, so it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like, there shouldn't be frame rate issues basically. So I'm surprised. I can't, I can't really remember there being frame rate issues. Careful of the spike. What I like about this title is everything's very. Uh, I, I get the impression it's very feminine, which is lovely, but not feminine in a like a. I don't know pink and cosy and silly way <laughs> like uh, I'm sorry that's, that's like that's one aspect of femininity maybe like plausibly but feminine in a powerful way in a very mystical way and a, in a very um, cultural and generational and um, matriarchal way which is which is something I've never not really come across in a title before to be honest um, I think I'm gonna drop this down here so I really like that aspect of it because that's something new and and it's been easy to engage with as well as a guy like um, it just seems to be like I don't know it's just a really nice title. Something about it. I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh wait, can I? Let's think about this. Oh, I can run up things. Okay. But I have stamina. Do you know what I mean? It's just such a beautiful title. And I, and I just think... I, th I really love this art style. Uh, I, I think it's cell shading and that's spelled C-E-L shading and it just seems to suit the narrative so beautifully as well it's 
like just enough for the narrative. <coughs> Missed it. I don't know how I'm going to get up there actually. Oh! Well, maybe this is part of the course. Cooperative as well. The, 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 you just, I just get the the feeling from the community that it's very like this. I don't know. It's just, it's just something that I've never really experienced in gaming before. This beautiful, <laughs> and I, yeah, it's been on my mind a lot, really. And, and as I've been itching to play it again, but I've been like, when am I in the right mind for this? Like, I've got to be in a chilled. Not like too tired, but in a bit of a chilled mindset for it. Is that a little house? Oh, robbing, robbing pots. I tell you what, the protagonists of many video games seem to be so entitled as they wander around. The worst is Lara Croft. She seems to be so entitled when it comes to. What she puts her little paws into. Oh, I saw that fire earlier, didn't I? For an archaeologist, anyway. She seems to be quite happy to, like, smash things up. Take the gold pieces out. this thing given to me, this bubble, and it helps me glide. It's lovely. The wind tower. Well, I'm pleased to be here. I just think this is such a magical game. I think I think the story is essentially about this young lady um, taking this rite of passage into womanhood. It's quite an old belief in. Um, sort of pagan religions that there's three phases of womanhood really there's the maiden the mother and then I think it's the crow and um, I don't know I don't know I, just, I suppose she's although she's transitioning into womanhood she's not She's not going to become a mother anytime soon, so... Does she become a maiden? I'm not sure how to get up there. Very nimble. I just hope there's like there's there's girls that could engage with this title that wouldn't engage with many of the other sort of titles that you know that sort of shooting and driving things. And I'm not to say like you know girls can't enjoy shooting and driving at all. I'm not I'm not making that remark. Um, but there's sometimes some truth in generalisations and stereotypes, and and quite often many girls aren't really interested in shooting games and, and yet consoles are full of those sorts of games 
and quite generally girls do have a particular genre of games they like mm. and I hope this is on the radar of many girls that are thinking oh I don't know if I'm interested in gaming where it's like well actually there are some things that can be really magnificent mm. given a chance but it helps to be able to relate to a female protagonist as well that, that do you know what I mean? Like that that makes a huge difference. I don't I don't know if it ever really worked with Lara Croft though, because the idea that oh well Lara Croft's female and therefore she's a female protagonist that girls can relate to. Well I I, I don't think she was really. Because to me it's a bit like the spy skills. Like people some people think, oh, the spy skills did wonders for women's rights well that's just because that was the narrative that we're told that they were doing but did they actually do you know what I mean and did they really empower young girls I mean do, uh, I know this is going to sound a little bit too highbrow but in the right way do you know what I mean oh she has no fall damage in this game by the way I can't tell where I've already visited I don't think I've already visited all of this so Oh, that's not a door then. I don't really get to see her face. Because, I mean, A, she's wearing the headscarf, but she's actually wearing a mask all the time. If she's human. I don't know. I don't, have I, I don't think I've seen anybody's face in this game yet. Probably more money. Little scamp, isn't she? I don't know if I've got. Oh, that's Crouch. Oh, that's my bike. I don't know it's where everything is. It's got to I feel like there's got to be something here to like to do. That's her calling the bike. Look, there's that whole section up there, so let's... Try and get up there. Have we been along here? way up there is actually to go down here, around here. There's another title that I've started playing and it's a climbing title and that was absolutely beautiful. It's on Game Pass at the moment. It really is a remarkable title and I've got to get back to that as well. This, all this climbing has reminded me of that title. Yeah, there is a chest in there then. Hold room top. Though they won't help me climb further. The hand wraps and lightweight fit of this gear are great for making scaling mountain heights more comfortable. I think I'm going to sell my climbing gear. I don't think I'm going to be doing much more climbing in life. I don't know. It's, I'm just gutted about the idea of it, but I've got to be realistic. The trouble is, like I won't buy used climbing gear, so I can't imagine many other people will. 
So I always just think, oh, I might as well hold on to it then. If I'm not going to fetch much for it. Down here. I'm not sure where to. Okay. It's a fair bit of climbing in this game, in fairness. Oh, just made it. My stamina depleting. Okay. So is that? Oh, this is a different one, isn't it? The way she floats like that. Oh, just made that. Got here. I didn't mean to disturb you birds. Oh. Okay, that's open. Prickly <laughs> cactus over there. A view. Look at this unusual tree. It's like a baobab. Standard uniform worn by machinists. Mid it. Machinists will always make sure each set has its own unique modifications for their own particular needs. A very revered profession in this game, the machinists. I think they're, they're a bit like, I don't know, the Mentats of June. They go around where they're needed. Like they're they're like sort of trained and raised by a guild of machinists, and then they go where they're needed. Um, is that what we climbed up initially? I don't think it is, is it? Oh look, my bike's hovering around out there. Must have been actually. Yeah, yeah, I have. I did go up here initially, I think. Good, good climbing strength. Quite enough to make it. Okay. 
Well, I wanted to check out this fire. Let's see what's been here. This is unusual, isn't it, this thing? My faithful bike. So, hey look, there's a bike over there in the distance. Is that a bike? No. That's the wind tower. Let's go this way anyway. I don't think, like, here, if I click follow that quest, will it give me... Oh, it will. I should speak to you, Tari. Where is that quest taking me? Is that uh, is that another bike gliding, or is it just something in the air? A bit of dust. Over station. This is quite some distance to travel. Still not there yet. But what is all this here? There's something up there, you know. Everything's climbable. Everything wants to be climbed. obvious can be climbed and not she's 
grey, isn't she? She's so nimble. That gliding bubble makes a huge difference. What's this here? Oh god, is it thingy with the maps? I'm not gonna make it, am I? I hope I hope so. Cartographer's balloon. Oh just Oh that was very difficult. Hello He's here. I greet the cartographer shyly a little cowed by how alone we are up here and how intimate that sometimes feels despite it being so much a part of my glide she responds with what sounds like a warm smile hello there glider thanks for taking the time to climb all the way up here surveying gets a little lonely sometimes you know I tell her I do given how lonely I can get on the sand sometimes I hope Simone doesn't hear. So then, what is it you need? Um, what are other regions nearby? Glad you asked. Head south if you wish to see the white sands of the wash. West you'll find the Red Sea and its myriad secrets, and to the east are the salt plains of the waste. Can I help you, Blyden? What's worth a look nearby? She chuckles to herself. Of course, you don't think I'm standing up here for nothing, do you? Have you been to the Great Wind Tower yet? Get up there and you can see for ages. And Verntoke Station is close by as well. You'll never guess what, why it's called that. I think about it, but she goes on before I can shout my prediction. And if you're a fan of insects, there's a gigantic Hercules beetle nest nearby. You know, rumour has it, they can lift 100 times their own body weight. So, can I help you, Blyder? Well, can I buy a map? Of course. Um, a badge. Traded by Contour, because it's quite a journey to get them. But the views are incredible, and they are always worth speaking to about the local area. Okay, well I'll take a cartographer's badge and I'll take a map. Thanks, Glider. Goodbye. Oh. So that's her floating house. Okay, let's get going. Of course, of own Simoon, Simoon, Simoon. Let's get going. Oak Station, so named because of the giant burnt oak tree. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ooh. It's a challenge not to view scrappers through quite a romantic lens. As I looked towards my gliding as a child, I pictured myself as a dust-covered traveller exploring strange forbidden places and finding strange forgotten things, a treasure hunter of old and arcane objects. And though I'm certainly the grind, I, and though I'm certain the grind of sifting through sand and dirt for useful tools and things left over can wear anyone down, I cannot help but weave some thread of my fantasy into the reality of the work. Greetings, Glider. Name's Altin. I give a bow and introduce myself as Sable. Uh, I give a bow. <laughs> You find much scrap metal out there, Sable? Mm, it's been known to happen. Good, good. Atlin leans back and looks up at the ceiling thoughtfully. Got a task for you then, if you're up for it. The hesitation in my voice is the product of a gentle intimidation, but I stand up straight and casually enough to seem like I'm up for anything. Alton seems to believe it. Enough. I need scrap, Sable, and lots of it, and you out there already, doing basically nothing, Alton chuckles to himself, shouldn't say it like that, gliding's harder, you have nothing to do, so you have everything to do, wonder if anyone's ever spent their gliding just lying around, uh, might be easier, I do that it might be easier an easier life to find big warm rock and stare up into infinity resting my way through a glide he snorts amused but I can tell the idea of an extended nap is one he finds inviting perhaps I do too anyhow the task let's see if you can understand this one yeah it's a bit complex I tell him I'm ready go out find scrap bring it to me what sort of scrap all of it big scrap little scrap medium scrap if it's made of metal and it's too busted up for anything else, I want it. I think you can handle that. I tell him I'm happy for any reason to explore. And that I'll return with everything I find. And let's say goodbye to Alton. Okay, so Alton the scrap metal merchant I'm just so romantically hopelessly in love with this title I don't know why just from like even Really, just from the advert, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, love at first sight. It's, it's just such a lovely title. Oh, it makes me feel tired. Well, no, I was getting tired. Is that a door to knock on there? Glider. They had goats in my fan. Ah, so you're familiar with their temperament. I suppose you are Ibexi. Say hello to Mar and JD for me. Well met. Glider. No less vile. Oh, I made this. It's a colour palette for a hover bike inspired by my work as a herder. Here, take some. I insist. I'd be very proud to see you riding a bike, Michael as Sable. Well met, Glider. What's up with the statue? Ah, you may recognise her, Juana. She's a great herder of many treasures, of many creatures. They say she came from the whale and herded the ancestors of the creatures we herd today. We teach that keeping your herd near her statues will keep them together, well fed and healthy, well met, glider. 
Take that bucket, no reason. What's in here? Narrow stalk food. Undoubtedly, my favourite food. And the first thing I would ask for when we pass travelling merchants for the Abexi. That's a bike, isn't it? Ah, look at my bike coming, coming towards me. Parked up. No. Then. Seems cool to me. The machinist looks me over. You're late? For what? For our meeting one another. You ought to have come here sooner. I asked the machinist how they know me. I do not know you. Not yet. Perplexed, I wait for them to explain themselves, but they seem to wait for the same. Briefly, I feel a hint of shame as I remember times I've been late among the Abexi, things I've slipped up in doing. But I dismiss my doubts as I recall that I have no idea who this strange machinist is. I ask them, my name is Utari. Of immediate relevance to you is that I am a friend of Cizo. I ask them if Cizo alerted them to my impending arrival. Perhaps she looks out for me and sets waypoints and oases along my gliding. A comforting thought. No, no, it was your hover bike. I heard it for the first time months ago and felt the shape of its voice, of her voice, sorry. I tell you, Tari, that it's not a, that it was not Simoon they heard. The size and I only built her a few days hence. They waved their hands at me in a hurried dismiss. Did Cizo teach you so little? The voices of our machines are eternal, more ancient even than their forms. I hear them, as I always have, and yours, I thought, would revisit me sooner. But here we are. Now, let us speak of why you have come. Something has stopped the wind tower working, and I stop Utari to explain that I've already fixed the wind tower, and I wish I could see the expression on their face. You already fixed it? I rock back on my heels and say yes. Why didn't you say so? You're not late at all, are you? You're perfectly on time, and I owe you an apology. I hope you'll accept it. Before I can tell them whether I do or don't, they roll right over me, and I insist you accept this. Utari produces a machinist badge, holding it out for me to take. You may have been late in coming, but here you are, where you are meant to be. I give you this badge not only in recognition of where you have been and what you have done, but in honour of one of many possibilities, that you may, if you choose, become one of us, who speak the unheard language of Simoon and her vast. This badge is but one, and you will need to earn more from others who carry them. But if, and when you do, the caster will know what you have chosen, and you may wear the mask of the machinist. I thank you, Tari, for it, and tell them I have much to consider. But for just a moment, I hear the faintest ringing in my left ear, distant and deep like a river below the sands. Listen. Oh.
Let's have a look, shall we? Customizing the bike. this the mass caster sits unmoving silent i can't tell if the mass caster is human i've heard about mass casters and stories about glidings before gliders should collect three badges of a set and bring them to the caster from whom the mask shall be cast i should look for some more badges i leave the mask caster okay I remember that vaguely. Meg, get in. Offered up by chums when planting themselves into the ground, perfectly smooth and hard as a rock, these eggs seem to float with how light they are. There must be a good place to deliver these. I think last time it was like that naughty girl in the village, wasn't it? But I knew instantly she wasn't that naughty, that she, she just upset at me going <laughs> dusk firefly I already miss the village leader the Bexy Nomadic Merchant Bob Glider Welcome. Come view my wares. Tell me about this camp. This is one of my beetle tent stations around mid, named after that big old burnt tree over there. Not sure what species an oak is, mind. There's plenty of characters passing through here. They're all worth a bother if you're on your gliding. Never know what badges and masks you might pick up. Don't be shy, chat to the tent owners, interrogate machinists and any other people you see around. There's also the scrapper's yard just below the big crane over there. There's a lazy scrapper down there who'll make finding scraps worth your time. See you soon. Everybody wears a mask. Oh, isn't this beautiful? Isn't this absolutely beautiful? This reminds me of the Sahara. Oh. The guard before me stands tall, her posture shaped by duty, uniform, weathered by years. Hello there, young glider. I'm nearly startled by the force of a greeting, but her voice is comforting somehow. Warm and welcoming, I greet her with the accidental enthusiasm of a traveller finding a friend. She smiles behind the mask, I think. Always nice to meet a fellow adventurer, especially now. How are you faring so far? Well, the world is big and I am small. You say that like it's a bad thing. Isn't it a wonder, the size of it all, that you can spend your whole life wandering and still find more to see? I think about the balled up fabric and smoothed out rock that will make my next pillow. And many to come. My neck aches faintly at the thought of how many nights I'll spend this way. It's possible I'm romanticising it a little. You see, 
I'm getting ready to leave on my second gliding. She reads the confusion in my silence. Did no one tell me of the second gliding? I suppose it isn't a real second gliding, but it's how I'm thinking about it. A chance to see the world again and how it's changed. I'm an Ekron guard, you see, or I was an Ekron guard. As of three days ago, I am officially retired. You should have seen the way the others looked at me. There is a laugh in her voice. All of them were so baffled to see me go, telling me how much they, how much I'd miss the big city. A few of them even felt sorry for me. Like, what would I do now that my life's purpose is complete? Can you imagine? I try to, but I can barely master a few of my purposes. Oh, I'll skip that. I said thank you for all the strange condolences, but tomorrow marks the first time in decades that I'll wake up in the morning and have absolutely no idea what lies ahead. And I've never been more excited. Don't get me wrong, I've loved my work, I even love the noise and the trouble of Vecria. But I've spent enough of my life standing around, looking hard. It's time to explore. Her glee is infectious. I ask where she'd like to go. I'm heading to the Badlands, I think. I want to see the Bridge of the Betrayed. If you haven't already, you should definitely go and see it yourself. You'll want the Northern Badlands, southwest of here. I nod, trying to keep the distractions in my mind. And Elizabeth gives me a little tap. Maybe I'll see you up there. Okay. Oh. I met Aoife, the innkeeper of the camp. What can I do you for? Uh, do you have any tasks? Before I can even finish the question, Aoife shouts, Larval husks. I repeat the words back to her as a clarification. I need some larval husks. The... How much do you know about the beetles? A little bit. Well, not sure if this is part of that little bit, but larval husks are what gets left behind when the beetle larvae grow. Beautiful, really tough casings. If you don't mind, I'd be grateful if you could collect some for me. The type I'm looking for are Hercules beetles. You won't need to go far, but the nest is guarded by the mother beetle. You're going to have to find a way to get past her. I'll, I tell her I'll do my best. Anything else I can help you with? Hmm. Got a few quests on the go there. Got any mail? Hello, Sable. No unread messages. Oh, well, that's a shame. Oh god, time flies by on this title. Okay, well, I think then it's time to choose a... So, I can either choose... The larval husks. mess that up. Oh, where are they? They're over that way, are they? Oh, they really have just come from there.
Oh, we've got a view from the bridge. I can't work out where that is. I can't see it. That might be quite far. And then the other place. There's the treasure scrappers, but... There's something over here. But I hate to say it, but whatever it is, it's unfortunately going to have to wait for another time because I'm so tired, I'm going to have to give it a rest for today. Thanks for watching, take it easy, and I will catch you next time.